My name is Peter Schienagel. I'm not mentioned in that slide. Um, <laughs> um, the colleague Markus, um, which should do that, um, is ill. He did not show up at SUSICON, so I jumped in and um, helped um, Fabian out here for the presentation. I'm also um, one of the senior architects. Um, I switched a little bit my roles. I'm not anymore only responsible for SAP. I do in the meantime a little bit more. But um, the topics are um, still the same as I did it, um, so I can easily jump in here. Um, so with that, um, my name is Fabian Herschel, Senior Architect for SUSE at the SAP Linux Lab and mostly responsible for HA solutions, so for limiting or minimizing downtime, thinking about how you get your workloads more online, more high available. Yeah, that's roughly the, the agenda um, we want to show. Um, so a little bit about um, what is SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications, because we have a special, um, special tool or a special bundle. And then looking um, how to achieve business continuity, then, then a little bit about the HANA um, system replication itself, and, and this is scenarios we support, and then how to do um, maintenance um, with the system. So a little bit background, so we worked with SAP quite a while, um, nearly um, since 99, um, having a lot of joint projects. Last SUSICON we announced that that was the Cloud Foundry Foundation, so we do together with SAP the upstream development of the um, cloud um, provider in, in Cloud Foundry. Um, so, and yeah, SUSE has, um, a market share um, on SAP systems running on Linux uh, about 70%. So most of the um, SAP systems on Linux are running on SUSE Linux. If you look at the HANA database, the share is much, much bigger. That's over 59, uh, yeah, 95%, yeah, so. No. So it was 75% of all SAP systems on Linux, so they run also on Windows, but um, <laughs> on Linux, it's SUSE. Yeah. And um, with HANA running only on Linux, um, the, the market share is much, much higher that are 95% or over 95% running on SUSE. Yeah, so there's still another vendor out, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is um, um, the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server um, as a quick overview. So this is a bundle we did um, for the benefit of SAP customers. So the, the central thing is here really um, the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server that's really the same as the normal SUSE Linux Enterprise, same packages, same versions, same update channels, really the same. What we did um, is we added our HA extension into that bundle because a lot of customers and partners talked to us and said, hey, my SAP system is really a critical system. Could I make it higher available? Um, so we said, okay, if every second customer or partner asks us this, why not let bundle that, yeah, so for the benefit. And then we've added a, a few other things here, um, sometimes technical things like the page cache management. Um, on the other hand, also, um, yeah, making things more easy with the installation wizard. So the idea with this is um, to install the operating system and the SAP system in one go with minimal knowledge. Um, for the page cache management, the, the background is that um, how the Linux kernel behaves. Um, the Linux kernel um, uses all free memory for file system caching and it prefers file system caching. If you do I.O., then it pages out applications in favor of having more cache. Um, but if you have an SAP workload and want to have a fast SAP workload, you want to stay this application in memory. Yeah? Um, and in a Java garbage collection or in a backup scenario, the kernel would page this out. Um, so especially for NetWeaver. So we said, okay, um, we do some, some high watermark, some limit um, that the application um, is more important than the file system caching. 
and therefore the application stays in memory under similar conditions like before. And this helped to have in, um, the same performance even with Java garbage collection or a backup or some, something else um, going on. Um, in Unix system, this is available. In Linux, not. Um, so we um, mimic here something. And then um, the other things coming later with, with, with HANA, the more important is the HANA resource agent, um, where we um, having having later on more details about, because this is what we um, use for making or automating the HANA system replication. Another thing we've added, um, because that's quite important in the, in the SAP environment, is um, um, how long you can stay on a service pack. In, with the normal Suzilinx Enterprise Server, um, you can stay only six months. After six months, a new service pack um, comes out. You should migrate um, to the new service pack. Uh, six months is an SAP environment, quite short. So in six months, you don't get a man maintenance window normally. So the idea here, what we had, let's have more time. And so we've added one year to that six months, so we have um, in, um, 18 months time um, to get a, a maintenance window to update um, your systems um, to, the, to the next version. So, and this is, uh, was quite well ac um, um, accepted. And the last thing is a uh, um, priority support because SAP customers um, or, or systems are um, um, business critical, so you need 24-7 um, 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 support and the, the thing about that is we do this together with SAP. The idea is to have one, one way for the customer to um, open service requests, and this is through SAP. So you can um, open the service request uh, with SAP, and if it um, gets out that it's a SUSE problem, our SUSE supporters sitting in the SAP ticket system and working with you. So it's really transparent. Uh, you don't need to open something at us. Um, so it's directly through the SAP ticket system, so it's more, much more easy um, to work that. You still can open a, a case with us. If you are sure that's a SUSE problem, you can directly also go to us. So um, This with the um, life cycle, so in the meantime, you can even extend um, this one year, what we have here, um, with a long-term service pack contract. As we started with Slash for SAP, this, this was not available. In the meantime, you can extend this um, also uh, with the um, long-term service pack support. Um, another feature is what is helpful in SAP environments is what we have in, built in with um, SUSE Linux Enterprise 12, because the main theme is 12, with 12 is minimize downtime. And with um, change to ButterFS and snapshots, um, we are able um, to do a full system rollback of the system. So this minimizes downtime, which is also a big topic in SAP environments. As I said, um, one of the things we have in the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications is this HANA system replication agent. And the idea is here, um, HANA has a mode um, which um, has, um, uh, HANA has all data in memory, and um, HANA shipping that data to a second node also in memory. So if you then do a failover to that node, it's quite fast because all data is on the other side. The drawback of that is HANA does not take care of the IP addresses. It does not take care if it's a split brain, and the switch over is a manual process. So if it happens night at three or four, is your administrator there and react in the right time? So we thought um, as we have the, our HA extension built in into that bundle, why not make use of it? Yeah. So we automate that with help of our HA extension on have built two resource agents which um, helped here to automate this um, failover scenario. Yeah? So the replication is done by HANA itself, uh, but the um, switch over and the condition check and all these um, um, things are done by our HA extension. So we move the virtual IP address um, to the other side, 
we um, um, change the roles, um, and we also take care if the communication is breaking, the so-called split brain, um, that not both think they are master, because this would be a data corruption then. Um, we um, check that and um, um, fence one, so graceful, not, not graceful, um, shoot the other node in the head is the other acronym here to make sure that um, only one machine survives and could not destroy data. Uh, for that, there are two res uh, resource agents. This um, topology only reports from the HANA, the states, and the other one is really the, um, which takes care of the conditions and um, switch that over. The installation is quite easy. Um, you install your HANA, you build your system replication, what you normally do with your HANA. Then you decide then um, setting the replication, um, do a backup, um, then you could start the replication within HANA. Then you can try out the system replication, so quite normal stuff. Um, if you then decide, um, okay, I also want to automate that, we install our cluster packages and initialize them. And then we also have an, um, for, the, uh, for one scenario, for the um, performance optimized scenario, this is hot memory um, standby. Uh, we also have a an, um, an wizard um, which creates the right configuration file for the cluster and then you are ready to go. Uh, so it's quite easy and also possible afterwards if the initial install is done right. Uh, this is how the, the, um, this, this wizard looked like, and it's, uh, it's, the screenshots um, are bad and you can, could not read it, but it should show only that it's a very simple step, and you need only three parameters here. That's the SAP system ID, the SID, the SAP instance, and the virtual IP address. So that's are the three parameters, and then we generate the rules for the cluster, and you have it. For other scenarios, it's a little bit more complex because you need to do more things. Um, we will come to that later on. Um, how is it delivered? It's a package in the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications. It's not in the HA extension. It's only in the Enterprise Server for SAP applications. Um, it has um, the wizard, the packages, and also installation and, and setup guide. So it's all there, um, ready to go if you run the, um, the system. So the scenarios we, um, HANA could run in, in more than one scenario. Um, and this is the initial scenario. Um, so this node all is in memory here, the data. Um, and the thing is, we have a very fast takeover because the data is preloaded on the other side and the um, and failover is quite fast. The drawback on this solution is this node waits for failure, nothing else. So it's a costly node, the HANA is not cheap and also the machine is not cheap. Um, so, but these, you can, could not use this machine. So it's only waiting that something happens. So, um, but you have a failover time in minutes, so that's very fast. Um, HANA could run in a different um, scenario also. We um, name it cost optimized because you can run HANA in a way that it doesn't replicate to memory. It could replicate to disk on the other side. Then you have the memory free to run something else, maybe your QA instance of HANA. Yeah. The drawback is um, that the takeover speed is quite slow because it means a cold uh, a shutdown of the QA instance and a cold start of the HANA instance. And a cold start, depending on the size of your database, if you have a few terabytes, it could take an hour. Yeah, so um, it's a decision, fast failover or cost optimized usage yeah, with longer take, uh, takeovers. Um, but also this is, um, could be done. And this, these are the two base scenarios. What we later see, the other scenarios are all based on these two because that's the, um, um, for example, this one um, with um, HANA um, revision 120, so HANA version um, tw um, 12, I think, um, they introduced um, multi-tenancy. 
So we have can have logical database in your HANA instance, but for the system replication, um, it looks like the same because it replicates the complete instance and not the tenants. Yeah, so, um, and then we, we are back in the other two scenarios what we have seen before. Um, we could do it as a hot or as a um, cold um, failover. Um, and the, the um, fourth thing is here, um, uh, multi-tier, that means uh, we have um, like, like a chain. Um, node A replicates to node B, node B replicates to node C. And the node C could be an asynchronous replication, so you can have um, longer distances. And um, within, um, um, but um, as it is asynchronous and not in the cluster, it's maybe on the other side of the continent or, or far away, um, we could not touch this node because we have no way um, to that node. So the cluster is only node A and B, and then we are back to the other scenarios. Yeah. Right, it's in DR instance, yeah. Um, yeah. And our newest things, what's um, now in um, Celeste 12 SP2, is um, having a scale out scenario. So um, um, what we have seen before is only scale up. So that means um, more memory for the database. But there are data out which maybe more than you fit in a server. And in the business intelligent area, you normally um, do a scale out approach of HANA. So we have a lot of HANAs. And you also want to replicate that to a second data center or to a second um, um, number of nodes um, to be higher available. And we also did that, um, and this makes things a little bit more complicated, and we said we only support um, the um, initial um, scenario. Yeah, and um, Fabian will um, take you through the more details um, how these um, all look like. Okay, thank you, Peter, for beginning the session. So, um, Peter already have told, oh, exactly now, the battery when, um, gets ill. <laughs> yeah, seems that it, now it's in critical. I take my private one. And hopefully it also works. At least I have a laser pointer and I can back switch back in. Yeah. yeah, perfect. So, um, Peter already um, told you what, um, why, why a scale out scenario could make sense for you. So, because of the data does not fit anymore into a one single, uh, single server system. The problematic for the cluster now uh, shown here with the uh, dotted. Um, thing is that it has to handle two, I call it swarms of machines. So uh, at each side you have a, a complete group of uh, systems of, for, for Sapana which are working closely together but must be handled at a glance uh, by the cluster. So I could not tell one system to switch over. I always need to, to switch over the complete uh, Sapana scale out scenario. Um, we added one more um, thing here with the so-called maturity maker. This is a small virtual machine, whatever you have. It could be on a third location and it could handle things and give the uh, pacemaker and information if a complete site goes down. Because in this case, you have a complete correct maturity. So if you want to, to control such a thing, that also a complete site could go, and go down and the pacemaker should do the correct thing, then you need um, an unequal, um, an, yeah, unequal um, number of cluster nodes. So, um, so you have, an, uh, yeah, all, all times you have a majority. If they are complete, you have an uh, odd number. If, uh, you have, um, if you have one side, Last of maturity maker, you have at least the quorum. Yes, it's not a quorum server because this is a different terminus, but it helps the cluster to have always the majority. So, um, with that, we are going a bit 
to explain what inside of a scale out scenario for, of Subhana could happen and what, which uh, node roles the cluster needs to happen. For first, um, there are so called worker and standby nodes. All um, systems in a scale out which could handle data. Uh, and could answer queries are called worker nodes, and they have exactly one partition, one um, partition type, uh, pa partition of the Subhana data mounted. It's not one file system; it's but one segmentation of the database. And uh, there are also standby nodes. As you can assume, standby nodes can take over, yeah, you know, or can fail over things, but they have not mounted a partition. So at this, at any point of time. When a worker node goes out of the, of, of the Zapana cluster, um, you can, uh, the standby node will take over, will mount this partition, and the Zapana HA has run the internal failover. But our solution must cover that. So are there another set of rules, uh, roles in the cluster? Yes. Um, there is a so-called master name server. This is uh, a machine which takes all first client accesses, so the clients always go to this node. And if this master name server can't answer this query by its own because it has only the data partition one, uh, then it says to the client, please, can you ask uh, node two in this case, uh, node three in this case, and the, uh, the answer came then back from this, from, from this worker node directly to the client. So, you can imagine that if this node, the master name server, is missing, your HANA scale out cluster is gone. This is why SAP has, um, for first, introduced the so-called master name server candidates. Um, and they are typically three nodes in a, in a scale out which could take the rule of the master name server. One is active, two are candidates. and um, in such a case as here, when the master name server would go down, one of those both candidates would take over partition one, and the, if, if a master name server already has a mounted partition, it must be dismounted and go to a standby node. So this means that if such a takeover occurs, um, now a client must be able to, let us say it would be this one had 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 take over. A client would first need to uh, go to node four, and this is then managed by our cluster. We'll see that later. Here you can see that uh, even the system replication in uh, scale out is a bit more complex because not only one node is synchronizing with another. You have multiple streams of synchronization, and our cluster needs to handle if one. Uh, if ever one of these synchronizations would be failed, it must be marked that it must get an overall status of the synchronization and so on. And um, you can imagine that a lot of things in a cluster, in such a big cluster, could go wrong. And all of those things must be covered by the solution of Subhana scale out. So if the master name server goes down, and the IP address switches over, uh, and the functionality switches over to another node. The IP address must be moved to that node. If a complete primary site goes down, this must be detected that this is not recoverable situation for the primary, and the system uh, must be uh, run, then the HANA take over to the secondary site. If a complete secondary site or any multiple nodes on the secondary side goes down, so the system replication must be, uh, is failing, the cluster must internally mark that, that the system replication was failing at this time and must first be back again and active again before any, any time later the cluster is allowed to take over. Even uh, our helpful, oops, even our helpful friend, the maturity maker, could be a point of an, of an error, and it never uh, should ha happen that the maturity maker would tear down both sides. So this is done by the pacemaker, um, that always the maturity is counting. Only if you would have a multiple failure, so complete failure of the one side, plus the maturity maker would also go down, then you have a problem because now you have lost the quorum. But these are so much failures in peril 
that you can imagine. This can't, uh, yeah, this is not a single failure anymore. This is not capable of a typical cluster. You can count it as a, it's not, it's not named quorum, so the question was uh, how, how the maturity maker makes the quorum. You can just count it. So uh, if you say you have, in this case, you have five nodes on the left side, five nodes on the right side would be 10 plus one is 11. So if you have six nodes, then you have the quorum. Yeah, so if you are, ju just if there are six cluster nodes left, the pacemaker could run that, yeah. So in this case, you had really a multiple failure of five nodes going down plus a maturity maker down, then you are gone. But sometimes automation does not make sense anymore if too much failures are coming in. Um, with that, to summarize what the Sapana SR could do in such things, whenever a worker node fails, either node or instance, uh, we can, um, first of all, the Sapana internal HA takes over to the secondary side. But we need to encounter that. We need to at least to check that. Is this working well? Because the landscape status of the sub HANA will go from okay to different values, and we need to monitor if the landscape comes to a running and answer um, and answering HANA again. Um, whenever the master name server goes down, we have to do even more. It's first, it's like the work, worker failure. So we follow the SR, uh, SAP HR decision, but we also need to move a virtual IP address so the clients could transparently reconnect to this, uh, to this landscape. If a standby fails, uh, again, no, note or fail, you would first say a standby does nothing in this cluster, why should I care about it? Yeah, uh, let us say a standby goes down and you do not care about it. So you have two standbys, <laughs> you have two standbys, then you have only one standby, and one uh, week later, the same problem in the hardware happens, but on the second node, so you have no standby anymore. You d still don't care because the HANA is running. Yeah, and then um, worker node fails, and then you have a downtime. Our solution takes that uh, purpose. So whenever you boot, reboot, uh, when, whenever a node would crashing and you get it running in the cluster again, our resource agent checks if a local subpana is up, but a standby role would be down, and takes the standby node up to refill, I would say, refill the SAP capaci HANA capacity. So you have then again one, two, three, or whatever you have configured standby nodes again. So it is an automate to um, enable uh, SAP also in the future to take over, uh, to fail over, sorry, internally. And already as explained, of course, if a primary site fails, um, we uh, check uh, was the system uh, landscape, was the system replication status in this situation okay? So uh, could I be sure that all data is on the second side? Then an automated uh, takeover is running, and if the standby side fails, um, we of course need to mark that that the system replication status is now of course failed, and that we uh, at this side will not take over before Hana reports that this system replication is back again. So, and with that, um, we come to the third thematic of this talk uh, around Sapana. Let's begin to talk about maintenance. Now we have a blue screen. Um, can someone in the audience help out here and say, Susa, please? <laughs> Susa, please? <laughs> Susa, <laughs> say Susa. <laughs> Computer, Susa. Oh. Okay, wasn't the session about towards zero downtime? So what is the computer doing with a blue screen here? Um, about maintenance, coming back. <clears throat> so, um, why do I need special maintenance procedures if I have clusters? Or what could be typical pitfalls if I do not have such maintenance procedures? Yeah, think about that, um, what could happen if you do something with your HANA but you don't tell it the cluster. You update Sapana and you read the SAP guide. Mm, stop Sapana now. Tick, you type in, stop your Sapana now. 
And the cluster says, oh, Sabhana is down, I take it up again. <laughs> and so you should have been, um, yeah, uh, practice. We are writing such best practices and here in the, in the talk, I, I show you the top level ideas. If you want really to be sure, always read the SAP manuals and our manuals so we can update it. Uh, I can't update the tutorial which we would have today in the future. Uh, so uh, as reference, go to our um, best practices side uh, for the products less for ZAP. And now let us begin with the first generic, ma generic maintenance procedure. Um, a good idea and good um, best practice would be first set the complete cluster to the so-called maintenance mode. You see that with the light green arrow. So both uh, cluster nodes are still running, they're still communicating with each other, but you know, now have switched off all monitors, all stop start actions. So even if you take down your subhana now, oh, the cluster doesn't care about it. This is exactly what you like. So then you run your whatever maintenance procedure. It could be updating a subhana. It could be installing some additional software you want to test first. And after that, you take, um, you take first set, in addition to the maintenance mode, you say that the master slave will be taken to unmanaged. This is a different status. And then you said that the cluster is ready again. You see that with a, lark, uh, with a dark green arrow here on the right side. And then you say, please clean up my master slave uh, HANA controller resource. Um, and I will explain it why. And last, you say that you um, re reset the uh, sub HANA controller uh, resource to be managed by the cluster again. Why are doing this complicated method? Um, it is whenever you had a situation where the primary was on the left side, like in the first step, but you would do something like an internal takeover in your procedure, and then the primary primary master names so primary side would be on the second side. Then the um, cluster would be a bit mm, confused about this situation because you only set him to sleep and said come back again, and then everything is different. And this is why you just say. Cluster, please forget about what you have seen before and reprobe all sites and just trust that I have did the correct thing. Yeah? And then the cluster will follow your decision. So whenever you had an, a switch over of the subhana as a result of your, of your maintenance or if you what had ever teared down subhana, so there were some errors in the cluster in the past, you just delete them in the cluster's um, memory and there's now we are beginning a new phase and you are, um, you are through. So these are only uh, the thing that you're running pre steps, the maintenance and the post steps. So now maybe SAP sometimes could tell you, we need to analyze something. Could you take down the complete cluster framework, please? And this is a genetic maintenance procedure for a stopped cluster. So beginning with the, with the started cluster, you first set the cluster to the maintenance mode, still saying to the cluster, if I now stop you, please do not stop my HANA pair. I still want to have it up. So then you can stop the cluster on the both nodes. You see that with the light gray uh, arrow, so the cluster is now down. You run whatever you want at, as analyzing with SAP or as maintenance procedure, and um, then you are gone. And then you said, okay, I start the cluster again of those no on those nodes. And because of you have set it to maintenance mode, the cluster comes up and will not monitor, not start, not disturb your HANA. It will just, starting the framework, so the nodes are seeing each other, so something like the framework is uh, already uh, there. And then you set again the, the master, control, master, so, master slave, sub HANA controller to unmanage. Say cluster, now you can start to monitor, to check what is going on. You reset any uh, errors you had uh, because of your changed rules or some the roles, primary, secondary, or so on. And then you say cluster, now you are ready. Um, please manage my, my uh, HANA again, and you are gone. So, so 
And this procedure, we, we have a very good experience with that with uh, both of those. Um, for example, a customer in the past um, had um, said, okay, I had a system replication running, but now comes the day where I want to make great for my original database. So I want to load a lot of data into my Zapana. And it could be maybe critical if something went out. We no, do not want the cluster now makes, and uh, makes a decision to take over or something like that. And then I said, okay, just run the, uh, the generic maintenance procedure. And in this um, orange field, there's not updating HANA. There's just the data, initial data load or takeover of the customer's data. Yeah, I told them at Friday how to do it, and then Monday they came back, we are online. <laughs> so it just worked like a charm. Um, here, um, maybe I jump a bit over, uh, over these details, just for your reference. The uh, slides will all be downloadable in the future, so you, so you can review single lines, what I do not quote now. Uh, how to update the Sapana system uh, in a system a replication scenario. It is okay, we first say, as we need to, to, to stop Sapana changing system replication in this thing, we first say the cluster, please do, not, please do nothing in this moment. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm taking down the Sapana as I like. Then the first generic step is to update the secondary node. Always update the secondary first, not the primary. It's not allowed to update the primary first, then you are gone. It's an SAP limitation and it's also described in their uh, documentation and of course always follows their uh, detailed procedure. After you have updated uh, node B, it has a newer uh, framework, a newer code, uh, but in the meantime, your production was running. So you have newer data on your first node and of course you must now uh, first, uh, run a system replication, any um, a system replication, waiting till it is synchronized. And if it is synchronized and ready, then you run and take over on production node B. So it uh, now takes over the production. Your customer, your yeah, clients could continue con to um, connect to the database. Um, then you update the former primary, in our case node A, and as an additional optional step, you can uh, even uh, remigrate the primary to node A uh, after completely synchronizing again. You can run the takeover command on node A just if you would like to have original configuration again. It depends on your needs. If you want to have that small downtime or not, if you want to have it more sorted, there are so much customer expectations that I would not say this is the only way to do it, so this is just an optional thing. And then we take the, um, the subhana into the cluster again as we discussed before. So sometimes customers are asking, uh, how could I migrate the primary to the secondary node? I want to do a migration. Okay, um, the good thing is um, it is possible um, and it, it, it depends on how you want to do it. The first thing would be, let's do it the, ha the HANA, the sub-HANA way. So in this case, because we are doing now some commands the cluster is not aware of, we are again setting the so-called SUSE prescripts, telling the cluster, please uh, keep your fingers away. We will then uh, run the takeover and register commands, whatever tool you like, and SAP is supporting command line, HANA Studio, or whatever. And if this completely is through and uh, new registered and the pairs up and running, then run again the SUSE post steps and then you have your new pair, the migrated pair in the cluster. It's also possible, but there are pitfalls, uh, to do it with the cluster tools. Uh, because of um, whenever you use um, a migration, you should be aware that you always say, uh, you use the form migrate away from here, please. You should not say migrate to node X, it's just, at the moment, a small limitation we are getting aware. And after you have migrated, 
you should either tell the cluster to unmigrate the resource, to take, uh, to take out this rule of migration, or you use a time-based migration, which ends, let me say, after 10 minutes. Because if you forever would add, please do not run here, what should the cluster do in a week or in two weeks? And you never say him, please come up here again. So just unmigrate or use a, a time-limited migration rule. In the future, we improve this, uh, so you do not need to take care if you which kind of uh, migration rule you are setting up. But again, you should um, be aware that you need to unmigrate uh, or to use time-based migration rules. And depending on your configuration of, uh, for example, automated register parameter of the Subhana resource, the, uh, the agent is even uh, able to automatically register the former primary. So it take over and the old primaries get the new secondary. You can select if you want the cluster to do that or you are too afraid and said, oh, first let me test it a bit more and then you activate it, it's also possible. Um, then a request which came from a customer, they have taken down their cluster, then killed the secondary node, it uh, completely electronically was destroyed. <sighs> and how to now get it in the cluster again, because the second node is away, and one node in the cluster is not, not, not so good uh, for, 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 for booting up. Um, and this is why you first start the primary node, you will till the cluster framework is running, then you have one manual action to do, you need that the subhana is started by you manually, because the cluster is not allowed to start a HANA primary if a secondary does not report its status at the boot time, yeah? Only at this cluster bootstrap time. Later on, of course, the secondary node could go away, but at the beginning it must be available or you do it manually. So, and then the cluster detects your started HANA, takes that over, um, this decision over, and you can then bring back your, later on, a new setup uh, node uh, as secondary uh, to this cluster configuration. You should be aware, this is not a limitation of our solution, it's a limitation of system replication in general. You shouldn't wait too long till you bring your secondary into this cluster again, because all log data must be stored on the primary to be shipped to the secondary side. And if you wait, let me say, one, two weeks, um, I'm pretty sure your log area is full and you run into an archive of stack. So this, area, this, uh, this period of time should not be too long. An option would be to, de de uh, to disable the system replication on the primary, to wait, to back up, to do all things locally, and then later on set up the system replication again. So um, how to do a test setup or something like that if I have a laptop with um, 30, 32 gigabyte, I only get one HANA on it. SAP has a solution for that. It's called, it's not especially for, for this, but it's uh, for developers. And it's a stripped down HANA, which is, um, could run or, on a footprint of around about six, 16 gigabyte uh, RAM. So you could run two virtual machines on a, on, a, on a laptop just to test, for test purposes to learn about. And then you need to do something with the Subhana that it is really opening the system replication because the Subhana Express is a stripped down thing. It typically from the beginning has no system replication. You need to do some commands to allow it. Um, to get it, you go, uh, you search in at Google for Subhana Express Edition. Then you get a page like this where you can register. You need to register in a Charm group. It's um, like, like a wiki. And then SAP gives you uh, login, gives you the possibility to download, gives you um, instructions how to install the machines. There are two ways, either a, a virtual machine file or an installable, um, no, not an install, an tarball where you can run the installer from. So it, there are two ways to get your HANA Express uh, being installed in your machines. 
you have tested it in the Linux lab. You can, for example, it's uh, it's a funny example to use a, a such small box. It's only only that sized. It's a uh, Intel NU key. Uh, either with a 5A or 7I processor, 16 gigabytes RAM, and two of them, and you can build a HANA cluster. Just to play around, just to be, get a bit more comfort with the, with the solution. Uh, so, three step would be get whatever devices you have, at least with 16 gigabytes RAM, two of them, install slash for sub on it, or slash for sub and a virtual machine on it. Uh, this is also sufficient and then integrate it with our cluster things, run going through our best practices and test, test, test. <laughs> so, and with that we come to results. Yeah, so, um, to summarize that, so the, um, maybe some work to the, the Rihanna Express, it's really um, built for developers to get their hands on, so it's really stripped down for, um, that you can use it on a, on a single, small, laptop um, and it does not have all features of the full HANA. It's really stripped down for a lot of different. Uh, um, depends on um, the um, virtual machine, the pre-built virtual machine. It's a VMware um, instance. It has built on SLES for SAP. So there's SLES included. And the installed, the installer version, you need um, um, an, an, an SLES um, mm -hmm. for SAP um, by your own. Yeah. So they're mm -hmm. both ways available. And that's, that's also from, from our side possible. We have a free download um, SLES for SAP. Um, on our, our, all our products are free for, to download, so developers can easily um, start and try out that. Yeah. So that's um, perfect for um, getting a feeling how HANA clustering works. And um, yeah. so to, to summarize that, um, we have that in the um, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications. And we are um, here really well prepared um, to limit downtime, uh, to come down this downtime um, um, in the SAP scenarios. The HANA system replication, um, we can we, we do support various scenarios um, from SAP, what's possible here. Um, and also the, the scale out that um, took us um, quite a while um, to have that um, ready and also SAP to have that ready um, for production use. And if you, if you want to know more in our SUSE um, um, web pages, under the product um, slash for SAP applications, there's one part of uh, best practices that we have a lot of um, documents free to download, which deals with, with all these scenarios. And um, the HANA Express uh, allows you quite easily to start um, your own testing, small testing lab. Yeah, with that, um, we are ready um, with what we want to present. So waiting for questions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Test, uh, other tools like uh, ESC, um, other software tools like uh, Unix system automation? No. 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 So we, we are, or Fabian <laughs> is one of the developers of the HANA system um, replication agent, um, is our pacemaker. Um, so the um, IBM um, stuff, and there's also another vendor which has a HANA um, um, cluster tool, or there are a few out. Um, they do their own tests. It's also running on SLES, so they support SLES. Um, but um, over 95% of HANA running on SUSE Linux Enterprise for SAP application, we have that all built in. You have that on your box while buying another software. So um, yeah, it's just in, yeah. So it's, you all, already have paid for it so as customer, so it does just use it. Yeah. And um, the others are certified from SAP. They run on SLES, so that's um, not a problem for us. But um, as we said, um, it's built in. We have some. We have customers using other solutions because uh, they have the whole contract with that vendor and having more from them. So that's um, a choice of you as customers. And yeah, so yeah. Um, from the feature set. Um, 
um, I would say nobody can do more as we. Um, so we have all, um, yeah, only only one. So the SUSE solution and from another vendor, they are n nearly on par. Um, all others do less. Um, for so. uh, example, for the, for the scale out, we had an early adopter um, customer, a big chemistrical customer in Germany. Um, and they have a cluster of, I, I think, 30, 39 nodes. It's even beyond our, our support limit, so they get a specific, special support, uh, um, uh, um, support statement that it is supported at their site, uh, and it works like a charm. So uh, we even have solved uh, at their site a problem which is really hidden uh, that if you, um, if on your secondary side, you completely take down your secondary side, uh, so the primary runs and has no secondary side anymore, and then you take up some secondary nodes. So the HANA system could not, not uh, at the end, not completely fulfill um, that it has for each primary node a secondary surface, then, uh, then before we did um, a trick in our, in our re uh, resource agent, the primary for half an hour gets completely crazy. It uh, closes its uh, SQL ports and doesn't synchronize anymore. Not, uh, and after some time it says, okay, the secondary is not, uh, not capable to synchronize and opens its port again and uh, works as never would happen. We fixed that and now the cluster could detect if the secondary, before it has started, is a candidate to have enough services to synchronize with a primary. And this is really uh, coming from a, from a customer which had, had such a long test list and we really had tested it the hard way. <laughs> so it is really, an, I would say it's really a stable thing. Um, the scale out thing, um, we had here in, in SUSECON also, I think they have a talk tomorrow uh, Oxia, it's a French, uh, big French hoster, and they have multiple customers running it productive since years, and they are always coming to us if something, small things happen, they say, ah, we have an idea, and then we doing it the open, 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 open way, as we have discussed in the, in, in the keynote. Looking at the idea, is it really a good idea? Is it more specific or is it generic? Could we integrate it? And if it is possible, we fix it. Yeah, and so we have a very stable, so very stable solution here. So with that, additional questions? Is the stuff only on the core or is the stuff only on the Yeah, um, the, um, the scale out is only available on SLES 12, uh, for SLES application 12 SP2. Maybe it will be also be available on SP1. It could take some time till it will be there. Um, Less 11 will only be scale up for general availability. And I think for new projects, if customers now coming up, starting such a cluster project, this completely makes sense that they start with less 12. Okay, so, this, yeah. so we, we, we have 11 core now, the scale up. Yeah. Cisco came in and did it all. So I'm not really familiar, I'm not really sure what's doing the HA stuff, so I was wondering if I read this, it sounds like it's not Susie doing the the whole pacemaker stuff, it must be HANA itself, right? Yeah, there are two, two, two things. The, uh, so per site, per site you have the sub HANA HA um, running your, your local scale out to be available. So taking in secondary nodes and so on, yeah? Yeah, but if more standby nodes going down, then you have, then you are gone. So, yeah, no, yeah. We, we have something similar like this. We, we have a DR side, but it's not automated. It's just, it's just the storage that's replicated to DR. Yeah. And then we have some nodes just sitting there waiting. Do, have you storage replication or do you uh, use system replication? No, no, it's storage. It's, uh, yeah. So uh, if you have storage replication, we could not automate that because there are too much solutions outside where the, the, where the, the storage itself takes over. Yeah. And you need a lot of hundreds of adapters between the pacemaker's cluster and, and the storage to follow such a decision. So this is not that easy to automize. And you lose one additional thing, you lose the preload of the data. So your outage will always be longer. 
because you from, from scratch need to load the data. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it additional. So if you want want to have a following, you want to have a fast file failover locally, then it would be an idea to think about uh, adding a f uh, adding two two things locally, synchronizing. If you have a fast f fast uh, being back, if uh, if one Hana swarm goes down, yeah. And um, the takeover then to the third side, maybe this could be a complete different solution. And there you must be, of course, be um, configuring or writing a, a good uh, um, a usage manual. Okay, but I must be on 12. Yeah, scale, yeah. scale out is 12. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To be honest, the early adopter customer has 11, but um, it's only for them because we have now more improvements in the cluster, which is for the field it is better, really to not to take, not to download the, um, the uh, resource agents from my GitHub <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and to do it their own. I would say Slash 12 is a bit better. Even um, if you think about, okay, you say, I, but, but I already have my Slash 11 running. Um, you need to think about that, integrating that into a cluster means also a lot of testing. This, high, this means uh, maybe building such things beside, not on, on site, on the same machines, could be a good, uh, good practice here. Do you know if, if when you go to 12, does it say you recommend that's how you do HA if you're scaling out, or do they recommend? Uh, you, mean, uh, you mean SAP? Right. No, 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 SAP, uh, SAP you, can, you can scale out beginning from slash 11, sure. No, my question is... Okay, no, SAP will never give rec recommendations. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they certify, they never will say, go the zoo's way, go the mm, way. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's good that SAP is doing that. So the, the, you as a customer have the choice. And there are not so many um, solutions out which could really do the scale out. Um, as, as we found also out the, the hard way, HANA needs to have some level of version mm -hmm. um, to run this really reliable. Um, and therefore, um, yeah. uh, SAP has added new functionality to the SAP HANA when we tested our scale out we at we the KMS We things which yeah. were we not found the things where the system notification did not work as, ex or did not report errors as is expected. And then they added fixes to the HANA. So, if I remember correctly, it must be at least 11, uh, SPS 11, uh, and revision would be uh, 112 or something like that. So it, it's, it's really at the end of um, 12, 11 or 12. Um, and then you have enough things inside of Subhana that you can integrate so-called um, HA and disaster providers. Uh, so and system replication providers, so such. If an if an uh, channel goes down, immediately the cluster will be informed about that. So it is even getting the gap between the detection of system replication status uh, more closely to the current status. More questions? <laughs> if you like. Um, so um, Hana is coming out with two point oh. Two point oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you look inside Subhana 2.0, a lot of things are, are still the same. So it's the, the interfaces we are uh, capturing uh, are the same. So so far as we have uh, the, had the p p possibility to pre-test, uh, um, of course we also test Subhana 2.0 in more deep in the future. So checking if anything uh, is broken, then we far rapidly. Uh, update our resource agent. So yes, it will work. Um, even the um, the active active situation. So you have the um, the read address, uh, the re read open on the scale up, uh, could be addressed with our cluster in the future. So just need to add one more um, one more resource, a second IP address for the for the read only side, and uh, and and. Uh, um, and uh, cluster constraint how to place this IP address. And with that, also, uh, 
yeah, Sapana 2.0 with the active active will be capable uh, to be run uh, within our cluster. Did you say the HANA Express and you can play with the stuff HANA Express? Yeah. You can do like a yeah, but but Sapana Express, if you look at the slides from SAP, they say it has no system replication, but you can enable it, but you only get asynchronous. So it's for testing purposes, it's okay. For productive, of course not. Oh yeah, just yeah. for somebody, so I'm always administrator. Yeah, want to play around. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They can at least check it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, with that, thank you for your attention for your time. Yes.